Now let's try using an equilibrium expression to solve a problem. Here we have sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. And uh, we've brought this reaction to equilibrium at a fixed temperature. And we analyze the concentrations of the species involved and we are given values for those here. And the question says to calculate Kc or Keq if you like. So our first step is always to write the equilibrium expression because you can't go anywhere without the equilibrium expression. So we write it down, Keq or Kc if you like. And it equals the products, concentration of sulfur trioxide and that has a stoichiometric coefficient of 2, so we raise it to the power of 2, over sulfur concentration of sulfur dioxide also raised to the power of 2 times the concentration of oxygen. It has a stoichiometric coefficient of 1 so we just leave it as is. So there's our equilibrium expression. Now we're given some information about the concentrations of our three species so um, the next important thing to do would be to collect the information that you know And then for this problem, all we have to do is substitute those values into our equilibrium expression to determine the value of Keq. So and if you plug that into your calculator, you will find you should get 11.7. Uh, or if we look at our sig figs, two of our concentration values here are only to two significant figures. So we should really round that down to 12. Okay, now just a short side note about the units of equilibrium constants. For a Kc, where you're dealing in concentrations, all of the things that go into making up your equilibrium constant, constant uh, are concentration values. So they all have units of moles per litre. So if we look at this particular one, we have um, our Keq has the concentration of sulfur trioxide squared on the top. So each of those concentrations has units of moles per litre. So because it's squared, our units on the top are going to be moles per litre times moles per litre. On the bottom, we have three concentrations multiplied together, sulfur dioxide and sulfur dioxide again, and then oxygen. And each of those also has units of moles per litre. Okay, so this is what the units of this particular Keq look like. But as you can see, we can do a bit of cancelling because we've got some things on the top and things on the bottom. We're left with essentially 1 over moles per litre, which is the inverse of moles per litre, which is the same as litres per mole. Which you can also write, because moles per litre can be abbreviated as big M, the inverse litres per mole can be abbreviated as big M to the minus 1. So you can either write it as litres per mole or you can write it as big M to the minus 1. Uh, you will not always be asked to give the units of Keq. To some extent they're sort of irrelevant because they differ from reaction to reaction depending on exactly what goes into the equilibrium constant. But it is useful to be able to work out the units should you ever need them. Here's another uh, problem. In this one uh, we've got the reaction between hydrogen gas and iodine gas to give hydrogen iodide. We're told Kc at a particular temperature and we're told that at equilibrium the mixture is found to contain hydrogen at this concentration and hydrogen iodide at this concentration and you're asked to calculate the equilibrium concentration of iodine. So again your first step should be to write down the equilibrium expression. Now all we have to do, we know Kc or Keq, we know the concentration of hydrogen, we know the concentration of hydrogen iodide, we just have to substitute in and rearrange to get uh, the concentration of iodine. If you rearrange this uh, to make iodine the subject, you'll get an expression like this. 
it should be a square bracket. And if you plug that into your calculator, you should get 4.8 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. Uh, all right, so that's that one solved. Um, let's we might as well just as an exercise work out the units of this particular KEQ. Uh, so we've got concentration squared on the top, so it's going to be moles per liter times moles per liter. And we have two concentrations on the bottom, which is moles per litre times moles per litre. So you can see that in this case, all of the units cancel out. And for this reaction, KEQ is unitless. But as you saw with the other example, this is not always the case. Um, However, as I said, because the units of the equilibrium concentration change from reaction to reaction, you will often see the equilibrium constant quoted without units, even if it's for a reaction where it should have units. So people don't get too hung up on the units of, uh, of the equilibrium constants. But as I said, it is good to be able to work them out should you ever need them.